Now, I don't know Wayne Madsen's view on this overall. I just know that he covers telecommunications, the NSA, the CIA, net neutrality, and is involved with the Electronic Frontier Foundation and the Freedom of the Internet groups, has been involved in it since these groups were started. He's testified to Congress, the EU, uh, you name it, members of uh, Congress have also had him as expert witness. So he is uniquely positioned as probably the biggest NSA whistleblower most people never heard about. You hear about Snowden all day, but, but Madsen was blowing the whistle back when they didn't arrest you for exposing criminal activity 20 years ago when he left the National Security Agency. Before that, he was in uh, electronic anti-submarine uh, warfare operations in highly classified areas of the Navy. And, of course, he's a frequent guest here on the broadcast, and I appreciate him coming on on short notice. I just thought, hey, we ought to get Wayne Madsen's take on this. All I knew months ago was they wouldn't show what the proposal was, and I said, I don't want the FCC over the Internet use antitrust laws on these big corporations that are already there that they can't stop people's information going down the Internet. If someone violates a law, those laws are on the books. Well, that's basically what... Commissioner Pye and others are saying, we're going to find out Wayne Madsen's view on this and then take calls on this subject uh, and others. Uh, Wayne Madsen, what is your take with WayneMadsenReport.com? What is your take on what's happening right now? Well, I wish we could freeze the current status quo without any sort of, uh, my, my fear is that uh, there's been a lot of lobbyists involved with crafting uh, these uh, FCC regulations. I think there's arguments on both sides of this. Here, 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 here. And I, I, w I was involved in this peripherally when I was with the Electronic Privacy Information Center years ago that the issue of net neutrality came up. Uh, and isn't the, that the group that turned into EFF? Uh, no, well, uh, they actually worked together. They're two separate groups. Some of the EPIC people went over to EFF. So there's been some cross pollination there. Uh, but they all basically. Uh, agree uh, that there ought to be net neutrality uh, where I, and I, I don't know their current take on this, I assume. EFF that, is now coming out saying they don't like the current plan because, uh, okay. go ahead. They, they, they probably, I'm probably in agreement with their stance. Here's the problem. Uh, the problem is that it, uh, currently without any sort of, um, because it's out there, the internet is out there to be preyed upon by the Comcast of the world. And we know what their, their intention is. They want to create these uh, multi-tiered systems of, of bandwidth access, throughput. And if we, if we, if we have that situation, uh, small websites like the one I run, and, and, and others out there are going to be relegated down uh, with the slow throughput. Uh, the Comcast, the Hollywood studios are going to get the high bandwidth uh, throughput. And, uh, and, and, and so good content, or at least independent content on the Internet, will be smothered. Sure, that's the Internet, too. And so yeah. at, at one level, globally, they're trying to do that and then have a censored, controlled, multi-tier system, then the FCC comes in as, quote, the savior, but then that yeah. will give them regulatory power so they can then, quote, compromise and bring in the Comcast plan. And here's the pro and that's the problem, because if you get the FCC involved in regulating content, this is a slippery slope, because we know the FCC regulates content on uh, the broadcast networks, so on the radio frequency spectrum, on television and radio. That's why, you know, you can't say those seven words that George Carlin talked about. Uh, personally, I, I don't care. If you don't like what you hear on the radio or television, turn it off or turn to another station. Uh, but the, I'm, I'm really afraid that this could be opening the door for other lobbyists who represent, let's face it, I'm going to be right out in front on this one, uh, th those thin-skinned belly acres from the Southern Poverty Law Center and the Anti-Defamation League who will start c crying about content, and they may try to use the FCC to regulate content on the Internet. Uh, and that's where I think uh, 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 this could uh, wind up, because I, I, I think, like I say, I wish we could just freeze the current status quo without any, without any sort of uh, lobbyist involvement or major companies like Comcast and Verizon getting involved. But that obviously isn't the case because we have this, you know, multi hundred page document that's been prepared that's going to, uh, you know, the devils are going to be in the detail on this one, Alex, too. Well, isn't it telltale that he won't testify before Congress, the FCC chairman, and the 322 pages is secret? I mean, right there, you shouldn't be able to pass something that's secret. 
Yeah, and the guy, the, the guy who's the FCC chairman, of course, Obama picked him. Uh, he, uh, you know, he's a uh, he's a former uh, communications industry uh, lobbyist. Uh, I mean, he comes right out of the Comcast world, so I wouldn't trust anything on his uh, on his sil- uh, his silver platter, whatever he's offering up. Uh, like I say, uh, it, I, I I think uh, what you say, it's not broke right now. Why try to fix it? And I wish we could just freeze the. The current status quo, but that's obviously not going uh, going on in D.C. right now. Let me ask you this question. More and more on every front, the globalist interests are accelerating their program to a reckless level. A, do you agree with that statement? And B, why do you think every globalist project is being put into overdrive right now? Oh, well, look, you know, the, the globalists are, are afraid right now. Look what's happening in Europe with Greece. I mean, the Greeks, unfortunately, uh, buckled. Uh, they had this new government. They, they said, look, we're not going to play around with these bankers and this austerity. But it looks like they, you know, in, in the 11th hour, they cut this deal. But it's, it, it, you know, the, these are like the uh, the, the little Dutch boy trying to keep his finger plugged in the dam because there's leaks springing up all over the world. And, and they're getting, frankly, very, very nervous about what's going on. Elaborate on the Greece-German situation. Well, what we had in a, a victory of Syriza, that's the far-left party in Greece, it was an anti-austerity vote. You know, Greece has been told to sell off all their public uh, sector assets, everything from the ports, which they were forced to sell to the Chinese, uh, uh, to airports, to ferry systems, uh, you name it, hospitals, everything was on the, uh, the chopping block. Uh, uh, they, they, they wanted to do to Greece what's going on in Ukraine right, right now, uh, selling uh, public assets for like pennies to the dollar. And uh, the only people that were making out were these, uh, you know, globalist bankers in Frankfurt, the European Central Bank, the EU, and the IMF, what they call in Greece the Troika, the IMF, the European uh, Union, and the European Central Bank. And, 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 and there have been people on pensions in Greece have been thrown off their pensions. They're not, they don't have money to get their prescriptions. Uh, I mean, it's been devastating. So they, the Greek people elected an anti-austerity government but what did they do at the 11th hour? Instead of just saying to heck with the EU, we're pulling out, we're going to reestablish the drachma, our old, cur- our, our old currency as our monetary unit. They cut this terrible deal, which means that Greece will continue with this austerity program. What, what, who, who's next? Well, uh, in Spain, Italy, Ireland, Belgium, France, all facing this too. Uh, either in France, you've got the rise of the National Front, the, the, the right wing party, which is supposedly against uh, these EU uh, austerity programs in Spain is Podemos, which is, uh, again, like the Greek left leftist party. But you, you, in other words, you, in, in various countries around uh, around Europe and in fact, around the world, you're seeing uh, the population uh, going to either the left or to the right because they're sick and tired of this. Uh, status quo uh, that's been engineered by these globalists. What they're going to is nationalist anti-austerity parties. And when you analyze the Greek debt and others, as you've done, and I've had economists on, 90%, whether it's Iceland, whether it's Greece, whether it's Ireland, whether it's Spain, whether it's Portugal, 90 to 93% of the debt, it's always the same globalist formulae, is a fraudulent derivatives, credit default swap, or other derivative trash counterfeit that Goldman Sachs, in almost every case, mm. operatives have had the president or prime minister sign the people on to, quote, bail out the banks, but then it's their debt to the very bankers they just bailed out, and so their pension funds get raided, or they've got to bail in and give money to the banks. I mean, this screw job is so epic, it makes my head spin. When we come back, Wayne... I want to talk about that with you. I want to go to phone calls. I want to ask you the wild card question. What big story is you working on right now? And so much more. TheWayneMadsonReport.com. He's on this right now. And we're going to tweet that out at RealAlexJones at Infowars.com. Stay with us, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Alex Jones. Then create a synthesis that is the end game that you wanted to begin with. The Galian Dialectic of Problem Reaction Solution is a Straussian economic system that is deployed 
as almost a fix-all for the global social engineers, in my view. And it's very transparent. There's a plan to create a two-tier, censored, controlled, hyper-fast internet that's already in place in South Korea and other areas. Have people opt in, waive their rights, and be surveilled, and then basically have a subweb that is falling apart, choked with uh, different tolls, and regulated as well. And so they have the Comcast and others come in and try to push this hijacking, uh, creating dams in the middle of the internet. Then Congress comes in to, quote, save us, but they don't. They let the FCC and agency come in and just say, don't worry, we're going to declare regulatory power over this without Congress even passing a law. So it's a constitutional crisis in that it's the FCC declaring they're just going to do this. And then we talk about FCC appeals when they don't have this regulatory power. And we've got the former head lawyer joining us Monday for the FCC, Bruce Fine. He's the guy that got rid of net neutrality in 1987. So we can defeat this. But, Wayne, what does it signify in the world right now? I know I brought up another subject as we went to break, but I want to go back into this for a moment in this short segment. What does it signify, though, that they're trying this? And if the globalists are in such crisis, looking into your crystal ball, talking to other experts, where do you see the world going? What are we about to see the next few years? Well, I mean, if you were to if you were to sneak in uh, to say the Bilderberg, uh, you know, you actually are inside listening to these people, these elitists, or the Davos World Economic Forum, or any number of these. Uh, I, I dare say that's been discussed at the Bohemian Grove uh, between you know naked romps in the forest. Uh, they're probably saying, "What are we going to do about this internet?" Because you know, it, it's this it, it, fairly independent uh, means of communications where uh, the nation state, as a matter of fact, just last week, uh, uh, three fossils, uh, Henry Kissinger, Spignan Brzezinski, and Brent Scowcroft uh, were uh, testifying before John McCain. And John McCain is very much, in, in, you know, in bed with these Comcasts of the world on, on uh, the Internet. And uh, both, uh, all three of these ancient fossils said they're concerned about the Westphalian system being uh, threatened by social media. And what are they talking about? They're talking about the Internet. And what they're talking about with the Treaty of Westphalia, this, is a, this was concluded in 1648. This gives you some idea of, of, the, uh, of the, you know, the, these people are living in the past. They, they want to return to feudalism. Uh, they want to return to chattel systems, um, and th th they're concerned. So, so when they're talking about the Treaty of Westphalia from 1648, uh, they they want their 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 feeling is that the nation state is being threatened. And right now, we don't really have in Europe, for example, we don't have a nation state. We got a supranational uh, group called the European Union, which consists of a lot of nation states. And I, I think basically. What they're afraid of is that the EU is going to fall apart. Uh, all this uh, Western Hemisphere, NAFTA and CAFTA and the Trans-Pacific Partnership and the Transatlantic Trade Partnership, all this stuff is going to come to a screeching halt because the people are going to say, no, that's our jobs. Uh, that's our way of life. That's our standard of living. That's our cultural identity, too. That's what Russia's upset about, being uh, you know, where they're trying to force feed Russia to adopt uh, standards. They're trying to force them to take political correctness, open borders, and Russia just right. isn't buying it and expanding on that. You're absolutely right. For those that don't know, it was about nine years ago. We're trying to find the article. We'll have to find the exact headline to find it when it's that old. But, but remember, he came out lobbying for Comcast and said, we need a law with no proof, basically, was the law they wanted that Comcast and the recording industries were proposing to, quote, blow up pirates' computers. That if you if they claim you've downloaded something illegally, then they have they send a virus that fries your computer. Remember that he said, "quote blow yeah. up your computer." Yeah, I mean, these people are insane. Uh, uh, you know, but the the mere fact that you had uh, uh, Scowcroft, Kissinger, and Brzezinski testifying before some shows they're scared. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, they, they have to haul these people out of the crypt.
to, to complain about how the, the Westphalian treaty system is being threatened by social media. You know, they're talking about you. They're talking about me. They're talking about everyone else out there uh, who's got an independent voice. Well, Hillary said it four years ago. They're losing the info war. We'll be right back with Wayne Madsen, your phone calls, and a lot more. And wild cards. What does he think is most important? I'll ask him. Uh, basically, Patriot Act. Jesse wants to talk about Jesse Ventura and immigration. Cindy wants to talk about ISIS in America. Yeah, they've just arrested supposedly three people. Fox News is reporting who wanted to join ISIS. We're going to discuss all of that. Also, they're set to move on codifying Obama's executive action uh, on merging us into a North American union. That's what they call the open borders. That's just some of what's coming up. Uh, meanwhile, college indoctrination on steroids, capitalism must be overthrown for the sake of humanity. Janet Yellen is freaking out about audit the Fed bill. Here are 100 reasons why she should be freaking out. Another article, ex-FCC chief shocked by Fed's attempt to regulate Internet. That's just some of what's coming up today that we haven't really gotten into in detail yet. Before we go back to Wayne Madsen of WayneMadsenReport.com, also want to get him to talk about his latest book. Folks should definitely go get it and read it and support independent journalism. But before we go any further uh, and talk about tales from the CIA, this month of February, we've had some of the biggest specials ever. A free bottle of Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Booster. Normally a $14.95 value. Free when you get it with two bottles of Survival Shield Nascent Iodine X2. That special ends in three days. InfoWarsLife.com or InfoWarsStore.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Super high-quality, life-changing products, certainly in my life. You've heard the rave reviews. I want to thank you all for your support. That's how we fund this operation. That special is going to end. Uh, we've got 20% off super male and super female vitality. Just try a bottle of it. If it doesn't blow you away, You've supported the broadcast, but quite frankly, I know what's going to happen. We haven't really seen anybody yet who hadn't had rave reviews of the stamina, the energy, the, to quote Beavis and Butthead, the boing, I mean, it is certainly, certainly uh, the real deal because of all the estrogen mimickers and fluoride suppressing our normal endocrine system. This will blow you away. And I, by the way, I have a new, a big university study out of England. Research exposes how our water is making us depressed and sick. It's a great headline, but it's not hardcore enough by Mike Barrett at InfoWars.com. who did a great job writing this article. It should say, university study, fluoride destroying the thyroid. Because you read the study that they're linked to here, 30% increase in the cities in England in hyperthyroidism and also underactive thyroid, so both. Just studying that. So you can go read it for yourself. Just another study to the thousands. The Harvard study looked at 25 studies proving a massive IQ reduction. The list goes on and on. What are you doing paying for a toxic waste to be dumped in the water? There's a lot of telegraph. Fluoride drinking water may trigger depression and weight gain, warned scientists. What? That was also in the, the London Telegraph? You mean they actually reported on it? When did they report on it? Monday, wow. The London Telegraph beats InfoWars by two days. Wow. I love being beaten by mainstream media. Yeah. Make me passe. Make me old news. <sighs> Anyways, you can get a super male, super female, 20% off, 15% uh, off all the water filtration systems that are already the lowest price, highest quality, InfoWarsStore.com. Have any questions or comments, there's literally hundreds of other great products at InfoWarsStore.com. You can call toll-free 888-253-3139 and talk to our polite, informed, great InfoWars crew that's answering the phones uh, in the building next to me. And then after 6 o'clock at night, we have an answering service, but they're still great folks. But you are talking to an info warrior when you call before 6 o'clock Central. So 888-253-3139-er. Uh, Wayne Madsen, uh, just now I thought of something. Do you feel vindicated being one of the first 9-11 truthers, demonized, vilified, drugged through the mud, pilloried, attacked 
for saying that Saudi Arabia clearly had a major hand in it and that there was a stand down in the book you wrote, in the interviews you've done for international, national media and this show. You were one of the first prominent 9-11 truthers covering real facts. They sent in the well poisoners with ridiculous conspiracy theories who all attacked us to try to discredit the message. But now the 28 pages, Senator Graham, head of the commission, says Saudi Arabia quarterbacked it, bare minimum, and that our government, bare minimum, stood down. We are vindicated. What do you make of that? And then are you worried about a new false flag? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about a new false flag. But um, yeah, I, I was actually threatened with lawsuits from uh, people in, in Saudi Arabia, uh, a Saudi sheikh, for example, because I, I had written about uh, the involvement of some of these Saudi banks, Saudi bankers, the members of the uh, Saud family in 9-11. In the current king of Saudi Arabia, I tagged him as facilitating the transfer of members of al-Qaeda through Riyadh when he was governor of the Riyadh province to uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan, uh, paying their plane fare to, uh, for their plane, uh, giving them their tickets, they're uh, paying for their hotel rooms, giving them cash. He's the current king, King Salman, not to be confused with what you catch out in uh, uh, the Puget Sound in the <laughs> Pacific Northwest. But uh, uh, I, I believe me, those Salmons, uh, those Salmon, those King Salmon smell a lot better than King Salman of Saudi Arabia. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, look, I, I mean, I, I, I had very good sources back then that were trying to tell me this was going on. Uh, and uh, I just, uh, I, I feel good that they're vindicated uh, more so than myself. You're uh, talking about Springman and others ahead of the oh, U.S. Embassy. Was one, yeah, Springman was one of many, uh, there, but there were so many back in the Colonel Butler. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're uh, just, uh, I, I think back on some, uh, unfortunately, some of them are no longer with us. Some of you know, kind of uh, gotten out of the mainstream. They got beat up so bad, they decided to get out of the... And these are people there that watched it all happen. I mean, th these were eyewitnesses. Yeah, I mean, they were... Uh, and, and some of them are, are still around, but uh, many of them uh, have left the military, left the intelligence services. Uh, you know, it'd be nice. They talk about putting up memorials. I'd like to see a memorial put up to those 9-11 uh, uh, truth people who, you know, suffered immensely... Uh, uh, and some of them are, you know, are dead, and I, I think suspiciously. Oh, like remember uh, Barry Jennings? Two weeks after he was on the show, you know, we aired the interview that our crew, I was producing Loose Change, uh, second edition then, and we interviewed him, aired the thing, and he was dead two weeks later. Yeah, even Jean Poffrey, the D.C. madam, told me she had information that would have been of interest to the 9-11 Commission. About you were on the show with her that day, <laughs> and I said, listen, they might kill you, and I said, you'll never commit suicide. She said, never. And then, I mean, and I remember I had the police detectives call me. I had uh, her condo manager call me and say, no, no, she was leaving. They were after her. He sent me her handwriting, looked nothing like her suicide note. Right. And there was uh, FBI agent John O'Neill that was on the trail of the Saudis early on. You knew Palfrey, by the way, quite well. Let, let, let's, let, let's remember the D.C. madam here. Yeah, I mean, they're, 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 it's a long, long list. Uh, but look, there's still reluctance to release those 28 pages, and uh, I pretty much been told what's in them. Uh, it's no no surprise to me where where these roads lead, and uh, you know uh, it'd be nice to see the pages come out. But I think it's going to be anticlimactic when uh, when they do uh, when they do are released because we're going to say, yeah, we already knew that stuff. But we're not going to get apologized to by CNN, Fox News, Glenn Beck. I mean, I mean, really, Glenn. Yeah. Glenn, come on, do I get an apology? <laughs> no, well, some of those guys, I, I, I have a bit of shot in Freud right now with some of them, like Brian Williams and Bill O'Reilly, uh, you know, uh, lying about their uh, their uh, war records and you know, O'Reilly trying to claim he, he was standing outside of Mor Mor DeMoran Schultz's house when he committed suicide before he was supposed to testify uh, before the uh, House uh, Select Committee on Assassinations. I mean, you know, if we if we've been able to get these two figures how many others are there like them that lie about everything what about what about brian williams list. what's your view on him i mean when he came out and tried to say <laughs> i met you know i misremembered being hit by a missile when he was an hour and a half actually behind it i mean that yeah. is just an insane lie yeah i mean who, who, who that's like saying i was in the uh, fertilizer plant expose uh, explosion in, in the town of west texas that's 100 miles away yeah exactly and i mean I, the thing is 
Uh, and, you know, poor Dan Rather got got uh, run out of the of the business because he happened to have told the truth. Uh, look, you know, he, of course, some of the evidence uh, was problematic. It, it was he had about twenty pieces, and we know Carl Rove spiked one Hell piece yeah. of this info. Yeah, so there's the there's the corporate media for you. You know, they 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 promote the uh, the ne'er do wells, the people who make up stories, uh, and, and those who try to report the news are you know shown the exit. Uh, you know the exit door. Um, yeah, I, I, anyone who look, I, I, I'm going to predict right now that in, I think in two years there will no longer be the half hour broadcast uh, e evening news uh, shows. I think they're 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 just ridiculous. Uh, Do you think yeah. Brian Williams will be seen as the bellwether mark point w in which the dying dinosaur media finally collapsed into a rotten heap? Yeah, I think I think NBC will probably be the first to get rid of its uh, nightly news, followed. Probably by um, ABC. Well, CNN's already segueing out to cooking shows and travel shows. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, that, that and, and and MSNBC does the lockup shows on the weekends, you know, and even the Weather Channel, we get you know Coast Guard guys in Alaska. What is this crap? See that getting back to the internet and and and, and net neutrality. That's what I'm. I, I I would hope that the internet doesn't become that kind of garbage. But I think there are people with com, you know the hot the Hollywood crowd and the music industry would like to turn the internet into a reservoir of garbage like uh, we see on cable TV today. Well, we can see the metric of what they call conspiracy news. That means anything that doesn't fit with the official narrative. It's what's growing. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't think this is something they can get rid of. I don't think that if they were losing the info war four years ago in Hillary's words to Congress when she testified, I think now we're really hurting them bad. Well, I try to regulate the internet. I keep my back up. I have my old Woodstock manual typewriter. I'll just start uh, uh, doing my stories on, on that and send it out by snail mail. You know? Well, we know the Soviet Union got crippled by people with fax machines handing out printouts just saying the government lied about this, the government lied about that. That's why everybody should always have an arm of their media operation that's low tech. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I mean, if they ever shut me off or anything, I'll launch an initiative people door to door to, to put handbills up everywhere so fast they can't stop us. Yeah, I want to, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually thinking about going to some uh, some garage sales and, and, and uh, antique stores to see if I can get those old mimeograph machines I used to have when I was back in grade school and junior high. Uh, By the way, I'm sure you saw that Germany and Russia are actually buying typewriters for their super secret communications. But the big secret is France already uses underground pneumatic tube for anything considered secret. Exactly, exactly. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see... Uh, uh, a lot of countries going back to what well, we used to use those in the in the military, even in the intelligence community called they were called bunny tubes, where you put your messages in these pneumatic tubes and send them from one uh, building to another one room to another. Yeah, my dad, strangely enough, when he was in France, uh, wanted to see get a tour of the SIRS, but it's not the actual SIRS. It's the old, you know, 500 year old ones. And there was a big tour and he went down in them and they were like, and I was like, what's these tubes? And they go, that's for secret communications. He just said they were just, just scores of them. This was like five years ago. Yeah. They're, they're very effective as long as some clown, as we've had on many, had on many occasions, uh, as long as some clown didn't put a banana or an apple in this thing because you wind up with banana mush or applesauce on the other end. Oh, so some of the people, even the agencies themselves would do that? Oh, sure. Have you heard <laughs> about this epidemic in federal agencies of people crapping on the floor? Uh, the phantom crappers. Uh, well, we well, had what if they did that in the pneumatic tube? Yeah, we had. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, yeah, we we had a lot of funny things show up in the pneumatic tubes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, there, there were stories. I, I mean, I remember that back in the barracks in the in the in the, in the navy, there were the, those phantom people that did such things. But uh, I mean, why why <laughs> do that? You you want to if you want to be crapped on, just turn on the CNN and, <laughs> and, 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 and get the latest uh, press conference from the White House. Or turn into Mrs. Mrs. Maddow or Mr. Maddow. He'll he'll certainly get crap on oh, you. Oh, I know it's it's ridiculous. All right, I'm sorry for the potty humor, folks. <laughs> Got to have some gallows humor. Hey, let's take a few phone calls, Wayne. Sure. All right, Wayne Madsen's our guest. Next hour, I'll get into the secret. Have you heard? It's even on mainstream news. They found secret black sites that the police have for interrogating people in Chicago. Yeah, and I'm, I'm really happy that Rahm Emanuel was kept under 50%. He's forced into a runoff, and I would hope that anybody who's a voter in Chicago would vote for uh, uh, Jesus uh, Ochoi. Uh, Garcia, I believe that's his name. I may have the last name wrong. I hope I don't. But uh, uh, he came out of basically nowhere and 
and, uh, and, and kept Emmanuel under 50%. So they're going to go into a runoff. And I would hope that the, um, that Chewy becomes the next mayor of Chicago and gets rid of that nonsense. Well, it's a good Star Wars tie-in. And now is this mayor seven and a half feet tall and hairy? <laughs> I, I mean, uh, Emmanuel is just, uh, he's just sold the city of Chicago to, the, you know, the, the highest bidder. He's a total gangster. I mean, for the folks he's who don't know, this was even in mainstream news that he would flip out in meetings and, and start under Clinton and start stabbing the, the, the table with knives, foaming at the mouth. And he would tell Obama to shut up in front of congressional, uh, you know, closed door meetings with Obama. I mean, he is crazy. Yeah. And Obama showed up in Chicago to campaign for him. But apparently, uh, as I wrote today uh, on my website, uh, uh, where Obama thought he um, uh, had coattails out there, it turns out he, he didn't even have a ferry loop to help uh, to help old Emmanuel. Now, now, did Emmanuel and Obama drop by the bathhouses like they normally do? I don't know. They might have discussed old times up there at uh, in, in, in what they call Boys Town. Maybe they're going to hang out with Sandusky. Let's talk to We're not joking, folks. Or, or Aaron Schock, the other guy that I reported on. He, he, you know, he's the guy that uh, uh, redecorated his house office, uh, House of Representatives office, as, uh, as, as, some, as some sort of, with all this old English uh, uh, wallpaper and uh, wall hangings and things uh, 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 Dalton, uh, in the style of Dalton Abbey. Uh, yeah, there, there were rumors that he was also frequenting um, th those same uh, places. Oh, let's skip the network breaks. We got more time. Kevin in Maryland. Kevin, you're on the air. Welcome. Hey, good to talk to you, Alex. Wayne, props to all your work, man. Thank uh, you. Yesterday, uh, Jesse was talking about the, uh, some of the immigrant workers and how they're kind of like artists. And I just wanted to <clears throat> mention that out in front of John Hopkins Hospital, they have a uh, Cobblestone Road, two lanes on both sides, separated by a median. I watched uh, Brickman pull up all the cobblestones, put them back down, and pour a concrete bus lane in a week. Meanwhile, our own city utility workers changed out a light pole for three weeks. So ethics, work ethic has something to do with all that, too. Well, it's bureaucracy. They've designed everything to be as expensive as possible if it's done by government. Uh, Wayne, what do you chalk that up to, Wayne Madsen? Well, you know, you're talking about big cities. Uh, you know, that that's, it could be Baltimore, Chicago. There's a lot of graft and corruption in Paola in these cities. I, I mean, uh, uh, the, 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 the era of the big, uh, the big machine, it's, uh, the city machines, it's not dead. Uh, you know, look, look, look how long it took to build that uh, that, that tunnel in Boston. I mean, you know, the thing took forever, and all the money that was wasted. Uh, I think whenever you're talking about big cities, you're, you're almost uh, you sure. know, it's inherent. You're talking about corruption. Kevin Wayne's got to leave in about five minutes for another interview, so I'm going to jump. But anything else? I uh, just want to say, uh, if anybody wanted to learn more about uh, your thyroid, look into the Hindu teachings of Anya Chakra. And it gives you more of a spiritual perspective rather than a scientific, you know, how your body works perspective. Sure. And uh, I got the, got the pro PRG2 filter working great. Got the uh, ancient defense so far so good. God Give bless it to my you. youngins also. Uh, do you have a minute I could say my poem? Sure. We found great treasure in the past. All this talk of moving forward without looking back. My people stressed out, yet we helping to cook the crack. Evil's real, and all the crooks are chilling back. Building gorillas for attack on the constant, but the content of the brainwashing is what's prominent. The nonsense, the problems, all the solutions without shooting, all the child abuse and all the prostitution. I'm losing my patience, right? But who do I fight? Knowledge is the war game, and your brain holds the light. The key to all the mysteries, the proof and the truth, let's lead these revolutionaries back to our roots. Very well said, my friend. God bless you. Uh, let's go to one more call, then I'll continue with the calls. Wayne's got to leave here in a moment. Uh, Cindy in Pennsylvania, thanks for holding. You're on the air. No problem. Hi, Alex. Hi, Wayne. Um, I don't ordinarily watch uh, network TV, but I do watch Lou Dobbs. I think he has a lot of... Um, Kudos to him. I like him a lot. He's a listener of the show, show, but Fox orders him not to come on. But go ahead. Well, he had a show on January 19th with Ryan Morrow with the Clarion Project. Are you aware of him? No, I'm not. And, oh, okay, you need to get up with that. Um, 
he was going over uh, these Islamic guerrilla training villages. They're called Islambergs. They're sprouting up all over the country. And they were showing, uh, Lou showed this in, on his show, these Islamic Muslims uh, with semi-autos. They weren't practicing for prayers, I'll tell you that. They were uh, showing how to slit throats. It was men and women. They were drilling. And uh, this uh, Ryan... Well, Cindy, Mauro he's got to go in a few minutes. I'll come back to you for a final word after he goes. But I'm glad this got raised. The West, if you go back to 50 years, funds the textbooks for the madrasas to radicalize Islam. Three arrested in New York for alleged conspiring with ISIS. Our government created al-Qaeda that became ISIS. How ridiculous is this, as they say, brace for Mall of America, brace for attacks. We've got to get more funding. Jay Johnson, the head of DHS, when this is the very... Remember years ago, we predicted that al-Qaeda in Syria would turn against the West. Now they've done it. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I just wrote uh, recently out of, out of the uh, 11 recent cases of, of these lone wolf attacks... Uh, France, uh, uh, Australia, Canada, Denmark, uh, Brussels, uh, that not uh, all 11 of them were had were known to intelligence agencies, were known to law enforcement, and some were probably informants, uh, agents, and, and, and nine of those 11 are now dead. Uh, That's so right, they're patsies, just like Boston bombing. Yeah. I mean, the older brother was on CIA payroll, uh, sent to uh, sent to the Caucasus. I mean, the Russia blew his cover two years before the Boston bombing. Absolutely. Wayne Madsen, WayneMadsenReport.com. Folks can find all your books there. They're excellent. Uh, tell us briefly about your newest book. Uh, it's basically a compendium of stories I've covered over the last 10 years uh, of uh, the CIA knocking off world leaders, politicians, and even uh, uh, people who were uh, professionals, uh, not politicians. So it's called Tales from the CIA Crypt. Well, well done. We'll get you on to do a whole interview on that in the near future. In fact, let's try to set him up now for about two weeks from now. Wayne, thank you, my friend. Good to be with you, Alex. Always informative. Um